So, Hare Krishna devotees, welcome all to our weekly Bhagavad Gita session. Uh, topic for today's discussion is uh, scriptures are the basis. And we'll directly jump into that topic today without wasting further time. So, uh, scriptures are the basis. And we explored this uh, topic a little bit in previous session as well, but we'll uh, do a little deeper dive into, into this uh, section to, uh, right now. <clears throat> uh, as, as we started with discussing the, uh, you know, from chapter 13 onwards, uh, we have changed, uh, we have changed our perspective. Till chapter 12, we completed the bhakti section. And from chapter 13 onwards, the Jnana section of Bhagavad Gita begins, wherein uh, Arjuna brings in various concepts like what is Jnana, what is uh, Kshetra, what is Kshetradnya, what is the object of Jnana, what is knowledge and what is object of knowledge and so on and so forth. So we discuss a lot of those things and uh, Krishna speaks something very significant in that one of the verse 13.22 was that uh, <coughs> that uh, Bhunte prakruti jan gunan uh, that the bhunte pravruti of jivas of soul soul has a tendency or a mentality to enjoy they have desires to enjoy uh, now they have they wish want to enjoy in this material world now which is a root cause r double o t root cause of all problems or uh, root cause why they exist in the world root cause of why they enjoy and suffer in the verse in this particular world and why this is why they are not able to liberate from it why they are not able to go back to their original world or tadhama <clears throat> parama mama which krishna describes uh, it is so attractive it is so nice but uh, jivas are unable to cut off the attachments to these roots, uh, they are not able to cut off the roots that they have to the current material world. Therefore, even though that world is so attractive, Krishna's world, uh, Golok Dham is so attractive, Vaikuntha is so attractive, Jivas are unable to give up their current um, current enjoying mentality and go to that uh, planet. So they are, as a result of it, they are bound, they are bound in this world and they are forced to take repeated birth and repeated deaths. Now in this, uh, so this becomes the, uh, this becomes our, this becomes our problem. <clears throat> Further, Krishna explains in the Three uh, the the three modes of material nature in chapter fourteen, where he explains that how uh, when when the jiva uh, a soul gets locked in the world, uh, he's given a particular body. He's in the, in the, especially in the human body, he's forced to act. He's forced to act uh, for the maintenance of the body during one's own lifetime, and while acting, he has a choice to act either uh, he under the influence of one of the gunas the three gunas are uh, sattva guna raja guna and tamo guna and krishna says that uh, whichever guna you choose it will create a bondage because the in principle you are acting for your personal enjoyment and if you act in sattva guna or raja guna or tamo guna or any combination of these three gunas these will produce result this will produce a good or bad result depending on which guna you choose. And uh, once you do a fruity work, uh, it will give a fruit eventually. A fruit will get matured. And for enjoying that fruit, be it auspicious or inauspicious, uh, enjoyment or suffering, we will be forced to take birth again in this world. So after death, uh, that is not end of the world. We are forced to accept another body which is suitable for uh, for the for either enjoying or suffering uh, the fruits of our previous karmas which are becoming fructified. 
and uh, so this is how the journey continues from one body to another body in the 15th chapter krishna explains again in detail the upside down tree of material existence with a metaphor of a upside down tree a reflection of a tree which can be seen on water on the bank of a lake a big lake uh, there could be a big tree and a reflection is seen in the in the in the water now that reflection as long as you believe that reflection is reality you will have no ability or intelligence to understand where the original um tree is and how does that look like how does it uh, what what you know what kind of enjoyment that it can offer one cannot understand uh, as long as one is stuck uh, in the in the reflection so if we if we turn our eyes away from reflection then we can see the original tree and uh, krishna is advising that you uh, use the weapon of detachment to cut down the uh, cut down your attachment to this uh, material existence and turn towards the original uh, object original object is krishna and his dham so where there is eternal life and there is it, eternal blissful life exists only in golok vrindavan or vaikuntha nowhere else uh, up to the right up to the planet of brahma uh, there is a repeated birth and repeated death so uh, so krishna advises you to uh, you know do this and if you are not able to do this then uh krishna says that you will continue to transmigrate in this material world and how how is that happen how does that happen how uh, how a soul is picked up from one body and deposited in another body krishna give example of wind picking up fragrance from flowers and you know transporting it somewhere else and uh, the flower doesn't even understand that its fragrance has been stolen by the wind but the wind who carries that fragrance can be we, we can smell the fragrance in the in the wind uh, suasik ho sakta hai and that way we can understand that this wind is coming from a garbage and it has picked up that fragrance and so that is how uh, this is how a soul is also transmigrated from one body to another body just like <clears throat> the fragrance is transmigrated uh, transported from one flower to another uh, the the experiencer of that uh, uh, fragrance and uh, so the and there krishna establishes himself as purushottama he saying that uh, going to spiritual world going uh, going going to brahman attaining brahman platform is also not sufficient because after going there also you will have to surrender to you have to first locate identify find out who is the uttama purusha there uttama purusha there and then then surrender to him and then once you surrender to anybody you have to render services to that person so you're you're escaping doing that in this material world that you will be forced to do even if you attain so called liberation and get uh, go and and you know uh, go into the brahma jyoti you will have to do that same activity there as well hence you do it now why not why why postpone it uh, to be done to to be done at that stage do it now it's all the facility is available all the knowledge is available so surrender to krishna and perform devotional service perfect your life in this one birth and go back to krishna at the end of this life simple <clears throat> and krishna identified towards the end of this 15th chapter that he is purushottama that person that who is the purana purusham who from who existed when nothing existed from whom everything has been created everything has been eliminated uh that per supreme person is krishna himself and uh, that is how uh, he concludes that chapter uh, with recommending that if you know this knowledge that krishna is the supreme personality of godhead and rendering devotional service to krishna is the uh, anybody who know this and start performing bhakti bhakti yoga then he, it is to be assumed that he has all he has knowledge of all the vedas and all the literature that is published on the bhakti uh, for the uh, all the vedic literature that is published one can be it can be concluded that uh, such a person knows everything because this is 
the conclusion of the Vedas. So with this, uh, we started with the 16th chapter, which explains the upper portion of the tree and the lowest portion of the tree. The upper portion, which is closer to Krishna, is that of divine people. And uh, the lower portion is of demoniac, demoniac people. So, <clears throat> so the road is only one. When Krishna says that uh, Manusha, <coughs> uh, that uh, which means uh, in the 4.11, Krishna says that, uh, uh, that everybody is on my path. Everybody is on my path because there is no path which can be separated from Krishna. Uh, the road is one, the highway is one. One is some people are going, has their face towards Krishna. And then with every step that they take, they progress towards Krishna. And some other people who has their back towards Krishna, who has turned away their face from Krishna. So every step they take, uh, you know, takes them away from Krishna. So the road is only one. Uh, it's only one highway, one road. People are, can either come towards Krishna or go away from Krishna. There's no other escape for them. There's no other uh, branches to this road that are available. <clears throat> so uh, the demons are also on the same road as the divine people are. <clears throat> but they are facing behind Krishna. Their, their face is turned away from Krishna. And hence, with every action they take, they go away from Krishna. They go away from Krishna. They go away from instructions given by Krishna. They, uh, they go, they reduce their, or they make their, path towards Krishna more difficult with every step that take because now they will have to turn around and then walk with greater speed to be able to reach towards Krishna. But uh, otherwise, uh, you know, with every more step they take, more faster pace that they walk, they go a further away from Krishna. Now, it does not completely alienate them. It does not completely uh, demolish their ability to come back to Krishna. But they are going further and further away from Krishna. That makes their task really difficult, if not impossible. So, uh, so this is how we understand. So, the people who are uh, of the demoniac nature and the divine nature. So Krishna explains the qualities of divine nature, 26 qualities which we saw. <clears throat> and uh, so those are the qualities of divine nature and divine people with divine qualities of divine nature they, who can demonstrate regularly or uh, with uh, who can who have who have imbibed those qualities and who can demonstrate those qualities. Uh, such people are very few, very uh, rare to be found in the material world. So Krishna doesn't spend much time in their description and their discussion. So in the first three verses, Krishna has covered uh, those people uh, by explaining that this 26 quality, if anybody can claim to have, um, then he has divine tendencies. He is uh, he's better situated to come back to Krishna quickly. But Again, unless you become a devotee, there is no chance of you coming to Krishna, going to Krishna. So it's like Sattva Guna is good, but it is not good enough. So from Sattva also, you need to move into Shuddha Sattva. That is a devotion, devotion towards Krishna. So it's like uh, if we give option of, uh, <clears throat> of which is the capital of India. If you give a question with multiple choices, uh, multiple choice question that which is the capital of India, and then we give three options that <coughs> uh, Washington DC, London, and Nepal, uh, Kathmandu. <clears throat> now, uh, Kathmandu happens to be the closest. The correct answer is Navi Delhi, but if that option is not given, uh, then one should not, even if one chooses Kathmandu which happens to be closest to Navi Delhi as compared to London and New, uh, London and Washington DC, uh, he will not be right. The answer cannot be right. So answer, the fourth answer has to be there. <clears throat> and uh, it does not matter which out of these three, which option we take, our answer will always be wrong. So this is uh, as compared to, <clears throat> this, is a, this is how when we compare our actions in the material world with uh, which are performed under the influence of three modes, either in Sattva Guna, Raja Guna, or Tamo Guna, no matter what Guna we act under, 
answer is going to be wrong because this action will produce a fruit and that for that fruit we will be forced to take birth again so uh, you know check uh, ticking kathmandu which is closer to navi delhi does not help we actually have to have a, an option of uh, navi delhi and we should have intelligence to take that so that our answer can be correct similarly we should have an option of bhakti uh, or devotional service in our life we should cultivate that option uh, with the help of devotees and with the mercy of devotees and krishna and we can we can with our intelligence we should make that a priority and take that option at the end of our life so that we can go back to krishna <clears throat> so the so the from 16th point 4 onwards till the end of this chapter which we will see uh, krishna has explained elaborately the people of demoniac nature the qualities of people from demoniac nature <clears throat> the what are their priorities what is their goal what are their objectives with which they conduct their life uh, what are their values what is valuable to them what is not so valuable to them what is important to them what is not important to them what are the things they indulge into what are the things that they consider enjoyment what are the things they considered uh, waste of time and so on and so forth and then not only it doesn't stop just by explaining these people but he go on to explain uh, what happens to these people and uh, what is the fate of people who are acting under demoniac nature <clears throat> now that is all which we will cover in the uh, up to the 24th verse today <clears throat> so this some of these verses we, we can just quickly revise before we start with the 11th verse pravrtim cha nivrtim cha this uh, verse we had uh, discussed earlier those who are the de uh, demoniac uh, do not know what is to be done and what is not to be done neither cleanliness nor proper behavior or truth is found in them so <clears throat> all the bad qualities that one can think of are found in people with demoniac nature they uh, they have <clears throat> they have they act whimsically <clears throat> so who are what is demon who are demons today's times we don't have demons with hoods and teeth coming out of their mouth with tall images uh, the demon could be your our own favorite politician our demon could be a grocer uh, who is uh, from whom we do all the shopping our demon could be our neighbor <clears throat> what to speak of our neighbor our demon could be you know us uh, we ourselves you could be the demon so demon is not a form demon is a mentality now <clears throat> in the kali yuga mahabharat we had demons but uh, now in the kali yuga demoniac nature is a mentality the mentality is to uh, is to is to act against the instructions of krishna the world belongs to krishna the world is created by krishna the world is operated by krishna the world is maintained by krishna and world the destruction is also in the in the world also happens with the will of krishna with the sanction of krishna so nobody can act against the instructions of krishna and be happy anybody who believes that they can act they can act against the instructions of krishna and still be happy uh, they are demons so those those who reject krishna's authorities those who reject krishna's existence those who reject the concept of god by per se <clears throat> by itself and then they will if if they reject this they will have to provide some alternative theory <clears throat> they will have to provide some alternative ideas and if they don't have any they they will manufacture their own idea hiranyakashipu said i am god uh, who why why you need god uh, there is no need for vishnu i am going to be vishnu king vena stop worship of lord narayana from his kingdom he said no need i am the king i you should all worship me this is a self manufactured theory my way or highway <clears throat> only i am me and my rules i will rule my life my me my life and my rules and reject everybody else's rules and uh, so this way 
the people with demoniac nature manufacture their own philosophy, their own thought process, their own uh, values. They create their own values. They create their own principles, and uh, they try and try to propagate those as well. They can get some followers. Uh, now, if you if you, if they say this happening, then they they then they will feel that they are successful. They are successful in accumulating wealth. They are successful in accumulating knowledge. They are successful in getting a lot of followers. Now this becomes their definition of success. And then uh, they, they go further and further and further away from Krishna in the process. Asatyam apratishthamte jagad jagadan jagad ahuran anishwaram aparasparam bhutam kim anyat kam hetukam so this is what a person with demonic mentality within will think that uh, the world is asat and apratishtam does not have any basis world uh, is without ishwara there is no god in control world somebody might have had created it or it must have got created out of bang but definitely there is no controller because everything is happening by the rules of nature and we can demonstrate those rules of nature acting in the in the material world so there is no need for god there is no god rather everything is produced out of sex desire and has no other cause than the lust so the world is created for enjoyment and the highest enjoyment a human can think of is that of sexual enjoyment uh, with the opposite sex so this is the conclusion that a person with demoniac person person with demonic mentality will have and all his actions will be directed towards fulfilling his objective etam drushtim avibhshtabhya nasht atmano alpa buddhaya prabhavantyu ugra karmana kshayaya yagato hitaha so following such conclusions which we discussed in the previous verse the demonic persons who lost to themselves who have no intelligence engage in unbeneficial horrible work meant to destroy the world uh, the whole work that they, they are performing uh, and we saw in the in the purport that uh, how uh, how the nuclear weapons which got invented as a which is one of the celebrated invention of science how they are becoming threat to the world and at our level uh, this is what we do we uh, work we watch and we shop ugra karma we perform from morning 4 to midnight uh, 12 the look people are busy working people you know return home very late at night and go home go go out go out for earning their living very early in the morning so they work extremely hard in the material world they have to work very hard they have to study hard then they work hard in the material world so that is called ugra karma yesterday we heard the definition what is uh, over endeavor <clears throat> over endeavor is when you are when you start neglecting your spiritual life, when you start neglecting your spiritual priorities, what is spiritual priority? Uh, hearing, getting up early in the morning and chanting our rounds, uh, reading scriptures, accepting prasad. When you start compromising on these spiritual uh, priorities, uh, visiting temple, taking darshan of Lord, taking darshan of devotees, visiting dham, attending yatras, hearing Krishna Katha, developing taste and desire to hear more Krishna Katha. Uh, if you, these are spiritual priorities, which are the primary dharma of a Sanatan dharma, primary dharma of every alive human being who should be only doing these activities. And to facilitate this happening, one will have a family one, so that this can be done in a framework, in a proper framework, in a structured way. And uh, for maintaining the family, one may have to work. Um, and as long as one is a, not neglecting the spiritual life and the family life, uh, then that work, whatever they are doing, can be considered as proper endeavor, proper activity, not ugra karma, not uh, horrible activity uh, or over endeavor. <clears throat> so we need to be watchful with what we are doing right now. And are we over endeavoring or are we? performing ugra karma or are we performing normal karma for our maintenance and wherever there is a compromise on the spiritual life uh, we should 
rectify make bring in necessary changes into our lifestyle so that those problems are fixed and we are we prioritize properly the spiritual life we prioritize properly the family life and to facilitate this rest of the time we will invest in uh, in maintaining uh, ourselves and we will get what we are destined to with our endeavor our endeavors will be sufficient for us to get what we are destined to get anyway and uh, for that we have been given abilities we have been given capacity to work intelligence to work uh, and all those abilities are gifts by krishna for us using which we should maintain our family and then we should concentrate individually on our personal sadhana uh, instead of doing this what do we do we work hard we extremely work hard we come back home tired and we watch tv we want to be entertained now uh, have, after having watch, worked very hard and then we, we what we watch on tv are advertisements or movies or beautiful male female uh, who come on our television sets and tell us that uh, you are not good enough you could be good you may think you are good but see you are not good enough because you don't have a physical form like me you have don't have physical beauty like me you don't have hairs like me you don't have body like me or you don't have uh, uh, you don't have facilities like uh, me now this is what a film character or a movie character or a serial character or an advertisement character will tell us that whatever you have is of no use is useless because the superior things are here superior things is what they possess and by those possessions they are happier and they will look happy that that's how uh, people look on social media as well so more you browse more you spend time on the tv more negativity that you will have about your own existence your own possessions your own self uh, your self image will go down more tv you watch because uh, beautiful people are there because they use this soap and that shampoo and uh, you know they visit these cool cities they uh, eat this cool food stuff and they drink this they smoke this this is why they become cool and you are you are useless you are garbage so after having taken this input what do we do we choose go to shopping we go to shop and we 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 want to now replace whatever we have with what we have seen on the television screen so that you know we can become like them we become cool like them and we um, and and for that we will shop we will shop and then we will spend all our money in in creating facilities for more enjoyment and uh, once money is gone we use cards we take loans or we explore we, we we take loans from people we take loans from banks and we, we explore and leverage every available facility uh, from where we can extract money and use it for shopping use it for creating facilities for my enjoyment and after having gone uh, all this money down the drain we are forced to go back to the work and work very hard so this is ugra karma we don't have to endeavor just like how we have got our body uh, our skin color our nose shape our eyes power power of our eyes a particular body a particular health a particular size of uh, size a particular you know tall how we are tall we are fat whatever we are uh, all that we have got uh, is because of our past karma now uh, michael jackson had a black body he tried converting it into white but he was not successful and white necessarily does not mean intelligent people white does not necessarily mean good looking people uh, but all his endeavor to become a white man failed he became a horrible looking man and he died early age because of all this chemical treatment that he ended up taking for on himself uh, just to become a white man instead of black man so uh, all that um, you know creates a problem for us and uh, we get locked up into this cycle of uh, stupid uh, karma stupid ugra karma uh, this was last we had, we had we seen that taking shelter kama ashritya dushpuram <clears throat> so taking shelter of insatiable lust and absorbed in the conceit of pride and false prestige the demoniac the illusioned are always want to uh, 
or unclean work or shuchi vrataha like like they take a vrata the vrata is like taking austerity performing austerity with determination of which austerity is to do what to do all the demoniac actions uh, which is which is which has lust or the or the sex desire as as a as the center point of all my action bring the center that's the central theme i this is my primary objective uh, i the, the the person with demoniac nature will think that sex is the solution to all his problem sex is the only thing that can give me some pleasure my source of pleasure and source of solution of all my problem is sex when one come to this kind of a conclusion uh say be it sex or be it sense gratification but with this kind of a conclusion when one try to lead life uh one's life uh, becomes extremely horrible extremely uh, painful and they may not even realize it but uh, we'll see what what they do now what they lead to chinta aparimeyam cha chinta aparimeyam cha pradayantam upashrita upashrita kamopabhogam parama et eta vaditi eta vaditi nischatah asha pasha shater badha काम क्रोध इहंते काम भोगार्थ अन्यनार्थ संचयान चिंता चिंता अपरिमेयाम च दे बिलीव दैट टू ग्रैटिफाई द सेंसेस इज द प्राइम नेसेसिटी ऑफ ह्यूमन सिविलाइजेशन दस अंटिल द एंड ऑफ द एंड ऑफ लाइफ देअर एंगजायटी इज इमेजरेबल a parimeyam cha the bound by a network of hundreds and thousands of desires and absorbed in the lust and anger they secure money by illegal means for sense gratification a uh, chintam chintam uh, a parimeya chinta what kind of a chinta chinta is a worry uh, or kuntha they call it kuntha that this world is like kuntha and uh, we need to go to vaikuntha where there is no kuntha there is no worry and so chinta aparimeyam cha unlimited anxiety why these souls have unlimited anxiety we'll find out more and this um, un unlimited anxiety is not for a limited period it is for unlimited period people perpetually in live in anxiety throughout their life till the end of their life they till the end of their current body and this is how they been progressing throughout the lifetime so this till the end of this world also they will live in this lifetime or this lifestyle only unless they correct themselves ashraya ashraya of what ashraya of kama upabhoga as a parama thinking kaam sense gratification as param as a, the the only source of pleasure and only the releaser of all problems all my problems can be solved with this uh, by sense gratification if one has this kind of a conclusion in one's life uh, then they will take shelter of kaam or sense gratification or the sex life now we need uh, to become krishna ashrita we need to take shelter of krishna but instead people take shelter of sense gratification to be the to be the answer to all my problems asha pasha another beautiful concept uh, pasha is a is a net in which we are caught up we are caught it's a it's like a uh, you know it's like a trap you know mouse trap that we use uh, you know where mouse come and get caught uh, and he, this is asha pash the bondage of unlimited desires now <clears throat> and, and and the desires uh, how do they act uh, desires when they are fulfilled they create another desire they create multiple another desire subsequently and that leads to hankering uh, or that, that basically this is lobha or greed and that leads to hankering that we want more we want more we want more uh, and if desire if that is unfulfilled it creates krodha or anger and that creates a uh, jealousy that creates uh, 
you know lot of other negative anarthas uh, subsequently follow and then we act in that way uh, you know we can actually harm ourselves we can harm others and uh, we can generally become a problem for the entire society so the desire um, is the is the root cause desire to enjoy the senses desire to enjoy the matter is the root cause it's again brought in here <clears throat> um so 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 this beautiful poem that uh, four line poem that appeared in one of the text uh, of one of the senior uh, uh, devotee which says that a uh, mind filled with unlimited desires heart filled with fears eyes are filled with tears and we say cheers we go to the parties and we say cheers uh, but this is what our real condition is in the background uh, you know externally we may be smiling and we may be laughing and we may be shouting cheers uh, with these glasses thudding each other but uh, this is what in the background uh, this is what the scenario is uh, that there is a, there is a huge hankering a mind which filled with unlimited desires uh, you are not happy with what you are have what you possess heart is filled with fear because fear of losing what you have the your own loved ones your own self uh, whatever you have achieved uh, your wealth everything one will one always live in the fear of losing it uh, the eyes are filled with tears uh, with the ugra karma being performed they have bad relationships uh, with their loved ones uh, most of the world today suffer with the mental mental health issues and uh, improper family life imbalanced family life is also one of the primary contributor to all the mental health issues people have aspirations people people have no uh, people have no uh, humility people have no hum humility <clears throat> people are not humble people don't have gratitude towards uh, what other people are doing because their own aspirations matter to them so much that they don't care about anybody else people are extreme becoming extremely selfish and that is how um, you know why and why are all this happening because sense gratification has taken the center stage is the center of their life uh, the sense gratification is what they live their life for it could be tongue it could be genitals it could be eating it could be sexual intercourses that people want to have with multiple partners or it could be um, the it could be smoking it could be alcohol it could be meat eating it could be uh, accumulating wealth you know anybody can have that kind of a uh, nasha or or intoxication uh, which push them to act in a very moral ways in illogical immoral harsh ways uh, that they go on and uh, accumulate wealth by all means <clears throat> so this is the this is what is the condition of uh, generally the people around us uh, generally we could be you know one of them uh, and krishna has been describing very elaborately the nature of these people the sense gratification is to be the supreme considering sense gratification to be supreme and the only source of happiness and releaser of all <coughs> possible problems that one may face <clears throat> now now <clears throat> let's take a minute to think about uh, that chinta chinta we should be we should be doing chintan we should be all of us are uh, you know um, meant to do a contemplate or think about krishna uh, that is the chintan and when you do chintan you become happy and if you are not doing chintan if you are not uh, acting according to the instructions of krishna uh, you become unhappy unhappy because there is no peace of mind so how can there be happiness so why there is no peace of mind when there is uh, chinta when your worries when your mind is filled with all worries or all desires of active achieving new frontiers new things new relationships new partners uh, more money more uh, property more uh, jewelry uh, want to eat more want to go here go there so when your mind is filled with all this you are actually not following instructions of krishna because you are not conditioning your mind you are letting your mind loose and uh, such mind is not uh, acting according to the instructions of krishna 
so this will be filled with fear and anxieties <clears throat> and uh, the chinta will will cause us damage uh, will cause us mental damage so why we become peaceful if we invest ourselves in krishna consciousness in contrary to this if you are away from krishna consciousness uh, why you are always filled with anxieties what is in what is it there in krishna consciousness which makes us peaceful uh, we can raise hands and we can discuss for some time Hare Krishna, Guruji, Dhanvat Pranam. Can can I just have a look on the question again, Guruji? Yes, I'll, I'll just share it on the screen as well so that others can see. Why we become peaceful having invested our mind in Krishna consciousness? What is it uh, that is there in Krishna consciousness which makes ourselves peaceful? Hare Krishna, Guruji, Dhanvat Pranam. So <laughs> it is a very vast uh, means answer can be for this, and it, it can be elaborated for so much of time. Because if we go as per the Shastra injunction that everything is emanating from Krishna, and uh, we are trying to invest in time, which is also given to us by Krishna. So ultimately, we are going to Father, and we are saying that whatever energy we have got, I just want to engage in your service for whatever you feel like. You just guide me, and uh, that is what is Krishna consciousness. That we are not uh, utilizing our mental speculation rather we are uh, utilizing the uh, the instructions of krishna to serve him in a loving devotional manner and when we are in that mode or even we are not that in the fully surrendered mode even we are aspiring for it uh, it uh, automatically controls the mind and which is impossible to control by any other being and a controlled mind is always a uh, house for peace <laughs> when the mind is controlled the total all senses are controlled and uh, i am not endeavoring or anyone is not endeavoring to as you mentioned that uh, the conditioning that i need to go out there i need to eat this i need to do that and uh, that all hankering is stopped just by, just merely by investing our time in the krishna consciousness merely by investing our uh, all energies in the krishna consciousness and that is why peace is the outcome and in okay. the second chapter uh, krishna also says that that uh, when the mind is bewildered Uh, there cannot be peace, and if we are not in Krishna consciousness, so, so mind will definitely be be bewildered with so many things that are looking around. Correct, and but peace. what is it in Krishna consciousness which makes us peaceful? Hare Krishna, so, Krishna himself. Dr. Nilrabu <coughs> and Nupur Madhaji, and then Vinod Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Prabhu Ji. <coughs> I think a lot has been said by uh, Vikas Prabhu Ji, but as per me. Uh, it's i got into krishna consciousness and i have de- developed love for krishna and love for krishna uh, has made me very peaceful i mean i am not sure that it is a investment but uh, once i got into love for krishna i would like to do everything what krishna loves and what krishna desires so this has made me more peaceful and i'm 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 always because i find all my answers in krishna consciousness and that makes me more peaceful i'm not in dilemma and if i'm not in dilemma that means i'll be peace so that is my solution prabhu hari krishna prabhu dandavat prabhu hari krishna yeah that's my nice answer nupur hari krishna hari krishna prabhu ji dandavat pranam am i audible prabhu ji Uh, yes, Prabhu. Yes. So, uh, Krishna is uh, in Brahma Samhita. It is mentioned that Krishna is Satchidan in the Vigra. So, he is uh, source of all happiness. He is source of all Anand. Uh, so, we tap into that energy of Krishna when we do something for him, or we are in association of devotees when we are chanting. So, we tap into that energy of Anand. He the one name of Krishna is Ram. So, which means uh, he is the source of all happiness. He is source of all bliss. so we we tap into that energy of krishna and because of that we feel happiness and we don't feel anxiety because our mind is filled with krishna and his thoughts and because krishna is non different from uh, he, uh, his name 
uh, even while we are thinking about him, he is not different. He is present over there. So that is why we feel happiness and we don't feel anxiety. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, yes. Vinod Prabhuji and then Shri Kumar Mataji. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Uh, Prabhuji, I will give my personal experience. Uh, I am I, not uh, having any code to uh, discuss here, but I, I find more enjoyable uh, being in Krishna consciousness and I started, uh, you know, uh, liking the, uh, what do you call, um, enjoyment, like uh, other, the things which were I was doing earlier and enjoying that. Now with this, uh, I'm uh, losing their taste, like on every weekend I used to go for, mostly I used to go for a movie. But nowadays, when, when somebody comes and say that, okay, let's come for a movie, so my first reaction is, okay, why you have to go? But of course, uh, sometime with, for the family, for the children, you have to go. But that enjoyment, which was coming earlier, has reduced. And it's not like uh, going for that. There's no urge for that. Similarly, going for a uh, proper you know, party or something. So that kind of taste uh, is getting reduced to that. And... Uh, Whatever time I'm having, maybe uh, sometime uh, going through the uh, videos going on this uh, Krishna related topics, sometimes discussion, sometimes. So that level of uh, taste has reduced other things and then slowly, slowly enjoyment has increased to that uh, level. So that is another change which I found here in uh, being in Krishna conscious that level of taste and, uh, uh, has changed now. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing this. Very important personal perspective. Uh, yes, Jikumari Mataji. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Prabhuji, uh, yeah, Prabhuji, when we understand that Krishna is only our eternal master and he is going to be with us throughout our life and after our lifetime also, then that is only the peace and uh, happiness. I, I believe in I understand. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you so much. Krishna. Hare Krishna. Vikas you want to say something? Or Mukesh Prabhuji, after that. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Yes. First, Mukesh Prabhuji. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Mukesh Prabhuji, yeah, please go ahead. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Dandat Pranam. Uh, Prabhuji, when we talk about Krishna Chetna, we talk about Krishna Consciousness, we talk about Krishna Uh, सबसे बड़ी बात यह आती है कि भगवान जो उपदेश देते हैं उनके वचनों पे हमारा विश्वास दृढ़ होता जाता है और जिस प्रकार से प्रभुपाद हमें समझाते हैं तो उसके माध्यम से जो है बहुत सारी चीजें जो है हमको विश्वस्त करती हैं कि हमको कृष्ण चेतना यानी कि कृष्ण कॉन्शियसनेस में जो है हमको असीम शांति मिल सकती है और भगवान नौवें अध्याय में कहते भी है क्योंकि भगवान ने भगवद गीता में कई जगह पे कहा है नौवें अध्याय में वे कहते हैं कि अनश्चय चिंत चिंतयंतो माम है ना भगवान कहते हैं मैं उसकी योग क्षेम को खुद वहन करता हूं तो भगवान जब इतनी एश्योरिटी हमें देते हैं तो फिर अशांति की बात ही नहीं है तो मुझे पर्सनली लेवल पे जो है मुझे भी जो है जैसे जैसे हम भगवान के इन गूढ़ जो है उपदेश को जब हम समझते हैं तो हमें अपने आप में ही अपने हृदय में ही जो है वो शांति जो है प्राप्त होती है तो ऐसा मेरा मतलब कि Uh, अभी तक का जो है जितना भी मैं पढ़ा हूँ और आप लोगों के संग से जितना समझ में आता है तो उसके आधार पे ये ये उपदेश ही जो है और जो चैंटिंग होती है भगवान की वो तो है ही वो बहुत हेल्प करती है साथ में तो ये 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 सारी चीजें जो है सब मिक्स करके जो है हमको अल्टीमेटली जो है शांति का मार्ग ही प्रशस्त करवाती है जी प्रभु जी थैंक यू सो मच मुकेश हरे कृष्णा विकास Uh, others also please raise hand or if you wish to contribute because uh, this is very uh, personal question uh, at our level uh, you know we all have experienced uh, some peace of mind and some happiness and uh, this is why uh, you know we are here why we continued uh, the reading bhagavad gita or uh, hearing krishna katha so it individually it would have clicked us somewhere and if each of us could actually come up with a different answer that why are they into krishna consciousness after say two years after some of you more than six months some of them could be you know even far last uh, 
three, four years or more than three, four years, you could be associated with Krishna consciousness, you've been chanting, trying to chant, trying to read Bhagavad Gita. So it could be a personal, uh, at a personal level also, this could be a very personal answers. If you would like to share, please raise your hand. We'll be happy to hear. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Pranam. So, uh, as we were, being, as the many aspects are being discussed here, the personal aspects and the scriptural. So, in the scripture, also Krishna gives the peace formula in the, that 529, that Bhokta Ram Jagdita Pram, Sarva Lokam Maheshwaram, uh, Suhridam Sarva Bhutanam, Jyatma Mam Sandim Vichadi. And if we see, if we put this uh, uh, particular verse in the practicality of our life, we see that except Krishna, there is except Krishna and Krishna consciousness, that is the group of devotees. No other person is uh, uh, extending their uh, their efforts to that extent that uh, they are they try to barge in our in our life and uh, tries to solve the problem permanently. No one talks about the permanent happiness. But here Krishna says that I am the uh, I am the uh, best friend of all the not to the single being but all the individual entities, be it in whichever species of life it is. And I am the best friend and. He not only assures it as, as Mukesh Prabhuji quoted 922, Yoga Shema he practically does that also. And uh, there are so many examples. So perceiving that and taking our own examples as well, that whenever something is happening in our life, like uh, one of the uh, Maharaj explains that Krishna is always continuously in talk with us. And he gives us instructions through devotees, through our own mind sometimes. It's like when we are performing some devotional service, it comes in Bhagavatam. The practical explanation of our problem which we are going through or in Bhagavad Gita or in some of the discourses. So Krishna actually not only gives us peace, but he tries, he makes it wholehearted or every endeavor so that we can remain at peace. So this is the thing which I could perceive that in the, this is in the Krishna consciousness, which gives us the peace and which keeps us peaceful all the time. And whenever we are out of it, we always become anxious. Uh, and uh, the uh, life becomes in the, uh, life comes into the mayhem that where it, it is in dilemma and it, is, it doesn't know which direction to follow. But uh, coming back to Krishna consciousness, the direction is clear that I need to surrender myself to Krishna and I need to uh, devote my time as uh, you beautifully explained that there should not be over endeavor. And the and over endeavor definition is that when we are away from Krishna. So, uh, when we are endeavoring to be in Krishna consciousness, Krishna is taking care of us in Yaya Thamam Prabhadyante. He, he actually, whatever he says, he does more than that. He, he is not uh, doing just his bit, but he is doing more than that. And that is why we feel always the peace in our mind. And even at times something bad is happening to us. But we think it that Krishna is trying to mold our life. And that is practically happening in the life of devotees. And uh, they are actually practically sharing their experience as we heard yesterday uh, from Prabhuji. So it, that is why it is always, uh, Krishna consciousness is always found peaceful by whoever tries to enter it, even tries to enter it. What to talk about those who are staying in Krishna consciousness for so long. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Jyoti Mataji and then Swapti Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Dandavat Pranam. Uh, actually, Krishna is the absolute truth. Uh, so here in this material world, uh, we all are hankering to have uh, that one true relationship, like in parenting or siblings or conjugal love, etc. But without having any knowledge about Krishna, which is not possible. So we all are just uh, uh, in this material world due to that ignorance of Krishna. So, uh, since Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna means all attractive and all qualities Krishna possesses. Hence, we get that peace, peace uh, when we get into Krishna consciousness. And uh, practically as well, I have experienced in various ways when I was not in Krishna consciousness and when I am in Krishna consciousness. Krishna is only one who can accept us as it is. So, just we need to love Krishna unconditionally and accept him without any expectations. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Dandavat Pranam. Hare Krishna. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, Swamil Prabhu, uh, you want to say? And then we'll go back to our slides. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Uh, Prabhuji just wanted to add uh, that uh, I have not been much into 
Krishna consciousness last six eight months or maybe approximately ten months. Uh, what I found is uh, after even the exercise of starting last fifteen days reading Bhagavad Gita, the knowledge of Sri Krishna itself is so divine. Initially, we used to look at all the individuals as an entity, but now even after going through all this. There's one perspective which has changed is that you don't look at people just near a people person, but you now think that he is a soul, and you are, are yourself a soul. So when a soul talks to a soul, it's a different, uh, altogether a different feeling. I mean, you feel so blessed that you are trying to understand another soul. So that has helped me a lot, and in fact. Uh, there is much more time to be invested. In fact, uh, the part of investment will be all throughout our life henceforth. Maybe whatever life we spent previously, but after getting into Krishna consciousness, probably I I feel that would be more worth than what I have spent up till now. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Dhanat Ram. Uh, thanks, thanks everyone for sharing. But <clears throat> all of you can contemplate on this particular uh, thought <clears throat> or on this particular question, and uh, you know, create some kind of a, a brief answer by way of a short note. You can feel free to share it with me. That what is it in Krishna consciousness that you are experiencing, which is uh, making you worry free? We we are otherwise uh, filled with worry, worries or chinta, as they say, and uh, why we what is it in Krishna consciousness? And this answer, there's no right answer, as uh, Vikas Roji mentioned in the beginning, that uh, it can be a, it's a, it's a, it's an open-ended kind of a question. It's not, there's no one right answer for this. As that at individual level, uh, Krishna will reciprocate with us separately, individually. It's not uh, doesn't have to do that identically with every one of us. Uh, and at our level, we would have found something some aspect of Krishna consciousness, some aspect about Krishna and his uh, divinity that would have attracted us, that would have uh, caught our attention, which is uh, which is once we get attracted to it, once we invest ourselves into it, and which is uh, becoming the uh, source of uh, pleasure, source of bliss for us, source of assurance for us, source of uh, um, source of <clears throat> happiness uh, for us and which is why we are peaceful and we are peaceful and we are happy. We are happy in performing devotional service. Uh, and that's where we all look forward to get up early in the morning and join Japa session. We all look forward to upcoming Vrindavan Yatra so that we can book our tickets and we can go to Vrindavan and remain in Krishna's uh, remain Krishna conscious 24 hours uh, for the whole day and perform other devotional activities. We look forward to go to temple. We look forward to do some seva, whatever gets assigned to us. Now, this is, uh, this is what we have not done for major part of our life. But this is what we are doing and we are relishing it. We are enjoying it. So what is it in it uh, that is the, uh, that is, that is giving us that pleasure and it can have a different answer for all of us. So feel free to take it as a homework and uh, if you will, and you can send me a brief short note all those who spoke they can if they have some other thought you know they can also uh, they are welcome to do this activity again as well. And uh, with this we'll move to the uh subsequent slides and <clears throat> and most of you have stated it correctly that it could be or it will be a different answer for all of us and not necessarily uh, because krishna will actually reciprocate with all of us separately it could be the for for somebody it could be the aspect that uh to understanding that oh krishna is also doing i am not the doer i thought you know all my achievements so far are my achievements are my uh was possible only because of my own endeavors, my own efforts. But now uh, when I study Bhagavad Gita and we actually understand with examples, when we look around, we realize that, yes, actually I was doing, but somebody Krishna was doing as well. Krishna was sanctioning as well. And whatever was not sanctioned by Krishna never happened, no matter how hard I tried. And whatever was sanctioned by Krishna happened. And it could have... Uh, 
it could have good memories bad memories and good things bad things which happened in my life and all of those were also sanctioned by krishna i must have worked hard for some of those achieving some of those but uh, we had it not been sanctioned by krishna i could not have achieved it and uh, you know we are dependent on krishna so much and krishna is so merciful krishna is so loving krishna is giving us so much uh, we never ask he never he is not even expecting that now this facilities that's of this world are given to everyone uh, but he does not even expect all of he want all of us to start recognizing have gratitude towards him have uh, acknowledge that what we are getting from him and start developing loving relationship towards him now this is his expectation and we know for the fact that 90% of the world's population is not even close to uh, doing any of these things they don't care for krishna they are rejecting krishna they are uh, you know they are they, they they have no faith in krishna they have no belief in god concept of god and they have their own manufactured theories and krishna is still giving them also the same uh, facility that he is giving it to the devotees the same sun that gives light to devotees is also giving light to karmis or or demons of this world today's world so he's um, he is so loving he is so merciful that we are, we have been it's like a father you know coming and coming home and distributing chocolates to all his kids now some kids are attached to father so they when they get two chocolates they offer one chocolate back to the father and father will, becomes very happy with them others they take their share and they run away uh, thinking that somebody else will snatch it from others so the elder child is trying to snatch away the chocolate given to the younger ones and actually becoming successful and then eating his share as well as that uh, younger younger uh, younger siblings shares as well and this is uh, now this is what is krishna observing us do uh, in this in this world and then accordingly if he does something like this he get punishment and uh, uh, at maybe at that time or at subsequent time and those who are devotees they become more and more attached to krishna krishna become more attached to them uh, by simple act of offering one chocolate back to his father uh, a, 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 the child is showing that he is interested in father he is not interested in child the chocolate chocolate is happy but he wants to share it with father and um, now the father obviously will have natural love more love for him so though krishna is surud of all the living entities those who are devoted to him he give them special attention he give them special mercy and that's very natural for a person to do uh, if it if had god not been a person then um, he would have been neutral all the time but uh, when a devotee when devotee offer something back to krishna uh, considering thinking that everything has come from you only everything is may you have made all these things available to me in my life so i will first give it to you and uh, then i will have it <clears throat> now now his love for that such uh, that child naturally increases and then he favors that child at times and that is how his interaction with devotees uh, happens and uh, with non devotees he is neutral uh, he let the law of karma decide their fate but he is also worried for them he is also providing providing them with opportunities to turn back their faces and come start walking towards him he wants them to um have these realizations that uh, they are not in full control krishna has a role in their life as well uh, this way or the other way some way krishna is also trying to allure them back to him uh, and he doesn't get tired of trying uh, no matter how hard the demoniac uh, people try to forget krishna krishna will continue to try to bring them back to him uh, on, his, on on his path so this is krishna's loving nature itself is uh, good enough for us to surrender him surrender to him and that way uh, you know we can uh, we can be peaceful that uh, the yesterday we heard a very nice quote from prabhu ji that if krishna takes you to the cliff uh, you can be rest, rest assured that either he will catch you when you fall down or he will teach you how to fly so you should not worry in either case so that way um uh, we we uh, that way once we you know the, all the all the devotees uh, 
who have developed faith in the devotion of Krishna will think and uh, will do. Let's move on discussing the demoniac people more and what happens to them now. We'll focus more on that aspect. Uh, Prabhupada writes in the purport of these two verses that demoniac accept the enjoyment of to the senses to be the ultimate goal of life and accept uh, this theory, this is the theory that they develop for themselves and then they maintain it throughout their life until the death. And uh, now obviously they have no understanding that there is life after death and they do not believe that uh, one takes different type of bodies according to one's karma or activities in this world. Their plan for life are never finished. Hence they go on preparing plan after plan, all of which are never finished. <clears throat> so it's like... Um, it's like you've set up a factory, small factory. You first set up a small unit, then buy another machine, then buy another machine. Then you increase production. Now you are worried about selling it. Once you start selling it, you want to increase your sale. You want to increase your sale. You want to sell to different people, different territory, different geographies, different countries, uh, and then different products, not just one product, two products, three products. So you go on increasing your capacity, you go on increasing your sales. So once you sell, you want to re recover money also. So then you are worried about, uh, you know, having produced goods and having sold goods, you are now worried about money uh, because ultimately you want to recover also. So again, you are worried about recovery. You want to make sure that everybody pays back, everybody pays back. Then people come running to you asking money of your suppliers ask for money. You have to pay them. Then government come asking for money. You have to pay them. Then employee come asking asking for money, you have to pay them as well. Shareholders come asking for money, pay them. And then again, repeat, keep repeating this cycle. So you are never free from worry. Plan after plan after plan after plan, you are never out of it. It's like a, a elephant, a big elephant who's stuck in the mud. You know, he, uh, mud or <clears throat> that kind of a daldal, it is called as in jungle sometimes because of the rain, it happens. And then he, he, he tried to remove one leg lift one leg out of that and uh, ditch and then the, the other three legs go deeper because now they get all the load. Then he tries to remove another leg and then the other legs go deeper. So he's perpetually get stuck in that um, kind of a ditch. And that way, you know, it's very difficult to come out unless you get some help from outside. It's very difficult to come out of it on our own. So we have personal experience of a person of such demoniac mentality who even at the point of death was requesting the physician to prolong his life for four more years because his plans were not yet complete. In Secret of Success, we do a beautiful drama Kailash, Kailash and Narad Muni, where Narad Muni comes from Golok Dham, um, Lord Krishna will say, tell him that uh, bring in anybody who wants to come, uh, ask them, uh, free entry, no qualification required, even if they have not done bhakti, they are not chanting, ask them still, if they want, they can come to uh, Golok Vrindavan. Narad Muni comes happily and then catches hold of this uh, sattvic looking person, Kailash, who is just becoming a doctor, who is a student, wants to become doctor, and but he realizes Narad Muni has come from uh, Golok Dham, so he wants to take him back to Krishna and he immediately becomes ready. But then he thinks that, oh, my, my parents have taken education loan, so I need to become a doctor. And then if I become doctor, then I can repay that loan. I then I can come back to Krishna. And then that this goes on. He every time Narad Muni comes after a few more years, then he says, I'm now married, my children are very small, so um, let them grow up, then I will come back. So I'll need some more years. And then Narad Muni comes back after a few more years. He's become very old. All children have grown up. They have their marriage is uh, done. Everything is done now. He, Narad Muni is hopeful that now at least he will understand and he will he will want to come back to Krishna. So he requests, he, he said, Chalo, Bhagavad Dham jana hi param satya hai. He said, yes, yes, Narad Muni, I want to come. But what, uh, and then he starts and then stops again, come back. He's saying that uh, Narad Muni, my children are, grown up, that's true, uh, but they're useless. You know, they know nothing. They, for everything, I have to advise them. Uh, and so this way, uh, if I go, you know, they will all be helpless. So let them, let me teach them some new tricks, all the, give them all the knowledge, and then I can come. Narad Muni goes again. He returns. 
that time uh, he asked this uh, old man is not there anymore so he asked one young looking man what happened to him he says uh, he's died he passed away then narad muni figures out using his uh, vision and then he sings that he sees that he's become a dog he's become a dog and now he's uh, barking uh, at the doorstep i got into a dog yoni then narad muni catches him he said what what happened to you you why you why you refuse to come if you become a dog he said yes now i have become a dog now i guard uh, my son is careless so they keep the door open and then they go here they go there i am guarding them so i cannot come also i am very busy uh, then narad muni goes come back his <clears throat> dog life is also over now becomes snake he is in snake's body and then he, he says what is happened to you now he says now i am become a snake and i am eating all the rats which comes here in the farm of the sons the son is so careless you know farm the these rats come and they eat all the all the produce all the crop and i am protecting it i am here so after this i will come uh, then narad muni says he, this fellow will never improve so he he asked that his son only that there is a snake there and then they bring a stick and kill him now right now and then his son does it and then this snake is crying oh i am your father what are you doing you are we are my son don't listen to him don't listen to narad muni i am protecting i am protecting your home i am protecting your crop and but the son kills the snake at the instructions of narad muni and then the soul gets separated narad muni pulls his soul out and takes him back to krishna but uh, the moral is uh, we are always having some plan of or the other to finish and it is never finish so <clears throat> what is the right time to start bhakti uh, if you are alive right now if you are in your senses this is the right time to start bhakti start our surrender to krishna start our dependence to krishna get attracted to krishna learn more about krishna think how what can you do for krishna since krishna has done so much for you what can you do for krishna so when you start contemplating on these thoughts when you start um, uh, this is devotional service and krishna says man mana then you chin think of him and then you 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 is for for increasing this man mana chant for him increasing this man mana uh, hear his katha increasing his man mana increasing about thinking about krishna visit his home in vrindavan visit mayapur visit chaitanya mahaprabhu read about chaitanya mahaprabhu read about lord krishna read about their devotees how they acted uh, in, in their life and take get inspired take inspiration from them take inspiration and act with that inspiration for the pleasure of krishna and this way cultivate remembrance of krishna throughout our life so that at the end of life we don't lie die being anxious of our plans what will happen to my factory what will happen to my land i have just taken the land not finished my agreement i paid them advance what will happen to that oh, my sons are all useless they will fight with each other what will happen to my wife who will who will be left alone their sons will not take care of her what will happen to um <clears throat> whatever of uh, my company my dog my cat i mean people can have any kind of anxiety with anything and uh, so this is what anxiety they will take to their death bed also and this is what they will think at the moment of their death if they have invested their consciousness their mind and intelligence into these things then these are the same very things that will uh, reappear in front of their eyes when they are about to leave their body and uh, this will not be a very glorious death <clears throat> this will be a very horrible death because they will get a new body they will be forced to get a new body they will be forced to um, you know suffer or enjoy for their actions and uh, uh, their path back to krishna becomes more uh, more difficult and more uh, longish so prabhat says these are for such foolish people do not know <clears throat> that physician cannot prolong even life for a moment what to speak of four years so when the notice is there there is no consideration of man's desire the laws of nature 
do not allow such a, a second beyond what is destined to enjoy the demonic person who has no faith in god or super soul within himself perform all kind of sinful activities simply for sense gratification he does not know that there is a witness sitting within his heart the super soul is observing the activities of the individual soul as it is stated in upanishads there are two birds sitting on one tree in one tree one is acting and enjoying and or suffering the fruits of branches and the other is witnessing the first soul is soul the other one is super soul the super soul is sakshi he is witness to everything that we are we have doing everything every thought that we are thinking our krishna is sakshi to that every action that we are taking good bad ugly in darkness uh, in isolated place where no one is there krishna is there so you cannot hide anything from krishna and all those actions get recorded and we are awarded fruits of for each of those actions be it good be it bad be it ugly and for enjoying and suffering for those fruits we come back uh, we take another body we are forced to accept another body but one who is demoniac has no knowledge of vedic scripture now all this information is not given in physics science or chemistry or biology or mathematics or geometry or history or geography this is given in scriptures and one who does not believe in god will have no relevance for scriptures the scriptures that is information the words of god uh, words of god why will he care for those so he will live try and live life with his own rules and uh, none of those rules uh, will be even closer to what krishna's recommended uh, path is that is of devotional service so even if he is he even if he lives a satvik life it is like it is like ticking on the kathmandu as an option when for the question that is which is the capital of india now you are close but you are not close enough kathmandu is close to navi delhi but delhi is the correct answer the bhakti or uh, devotional service is the correct answer and so if that is not available to us in our life then no matter what option we take we have ticked a wrong option and we don't we don't get uh, elevated for that choosing wrong another uh, beautiful verse <clears throat> idam adya maya labdham imam prapse manoratham idam idam astim da <clears throat> idam astim api me uh, bhavishyati punardhanam we will we'll go through these verses and then the translation which is very long translation aso maya hatah shatru nishche chaparat chaparan api ishvara aham aham bhogi siddho aham balavan sukhi adyo abhija abhijavana asmi abhijana vasmi kon ko anyo asti sadrusho maya yakshe dasyami modishya a very beautiful verses uh, describing people of uh, how they act how they think and how they act the demonic people person thinks so much wealth do i have today and i will gain more according to my schemes he doesn't believe in karma so he says according to my schemes my plans i will get more wealth i will accumulate more wealth so much is mine now and it will increase in the future i have this is manoratha the chariot of mind when you let it loose this is what it come back with uh, i will increase in the future more and more he is my enemy and i have i have killed him and my other enemies will also be killed i am lord of everything i am the enjoyer i am perfect i am powerful happy i am the richest man surrounded by aristocratic relatives there is no one there is none so powerful and happy as i am i shall perform sacrifices i shall give some charity thus i shall rejoice in this way such persons are deluded by ignorance now the last line is very important the such persons are deluded by ignorance and the subsequent verses are even more important but uh, let us go through what uh, this person the people with demonic mentalities are thinking <clears throat> now they have 
all the plans of uh, of of becoming god that by themselves ishwar aham aham bhogi and uh, now obviously they have no they have no knowledge about law of karma so they they have they are also ahankara vimudhatma karta hum iti manyate they are thinking they are the doers and uh, they can accumulate any amount of wealth that they want if they work hard they can get more they don't uh, there is a shatrik uh, upanishad verse that uh, shri shubhanishad which says that magradha uh, kasya svita dhanam uh, that tena taktena bhunjita magradha kasya svita dhanam that uh, everyone is allotted a quota of enjoyments and sufferings and that they will get by default so one should not unnecessarily over endeavor to get other people share because knowing fully to whom it belongs to whatever is allotted to you is yours but that is also for a temporary period and everything else belongs to krishna <clears throat> because <clears throat> that is that is ishavasya idam sarvam ishavasya idam sarvam yat kincha jagat yam jagat tena taktena bhunjita magradha kasya svita dhanam so everything belongs to ishwara ishavasya everything is own control and is is by by ishwara and nothing is mine so whatever is quota belongs to me that is due to be given to me will come to me my quota will come to me i don't have to over and ever to uh, you know snatch other people's quota and that is uh, if i want to live in harmony with krishna uh, this is the action this is the basic action that we need to take yeah, otherwise we become eligible for punishments and krishna will give us punishment he is hard he is harder than million father um, father is hard then he is harder than all of them put together aneka chitta vibhranta moha jala samavrtah prasaktah kama bhogeshu patanti narashe narakeshu cho Uh, what happens to these people now now this this descriptions for this descriptions we can find in people around us or in us so we should also carefully know what happens to them uh, what is their gati what happens to them later uh, because then only we will have sufficient um motivation to change ourselves uh, if we happen to be in this category or be merciful to others whom we see are having this kind of a behavior uh, because this is going to be their mati this is going to uh, what is going to happen to them uh, their path back to krishna is going to become much much more harder uh, going forward if they continue to operate in that zone so thus perplexed by various anxieties aneka chitta vibhranta moha jala samavrtah becoming again moha jala asha pasha these are all traps uh, that uh, this is a trap by moha jala and that is asha asha is a desire asha is i will get this i will get that ye bhi hoga mere sath wo hoga this is like mungeri lal ke sapne you know you have some pot of milk you sit with a pot of milk and then you uh, you want to sell it you come in the market with a pot of small milk and then you say want to sell it now you start uh, dreaming it's like a day dreaming thinking that okay you will sell this pot of milk for uh, this much profit then after that you will buy uh, you will make after few days you know you will have a lot of money then you will buy instead of bringing in two one pot of milk i you will start bringing three four pot of milks so you will get more money eventually you will buy a cow and a cow shed then you have have more cow you will have more cow you will have few more cows then you will have lots of cows lots of milk then you will have lots of people working for you you don't have to work hard sit in the sun selling this milk anymore then what you will do you will enjoy you want to enjoy then you will get married you will buy a beautiful house and then you will have a wife and then you will ask her to come and uh, do this for me and if she doesn't do it then you with a stick you will hit her so that you will force her to do what you want to do and with this thinking this he hit the pot in front of him and all the milk that was there that which he had brought for selling spills and all his plans become null and void uh, so this is manoratha manoratha is chariot of mind getting let loose and thinking what it should not be thinking um 
now this is a perplex mental state confused mental state and this is what krishna is saying aneka chitta vibhramanta it's like um, it's like bahu shakha hi anantascha buddhayo vyavasainam aneka chitta he has many plans and many directions in which he is thinking there's no concentration of mind <coughs> that is uh, vyavasaitmaka buddhi is not there so uh, and then bound and each of those thoughts bring in with itself uh, various anxieties and uh, bound by the network of illusion they become so strongly attached to the sense enjoyment and fall down to hell uh prabhat writes beautiful purport the demoniac man knows uh, no limit uh, uh to his desire to acquire money and that is unlimited the, the, he thinks only of how much um, how much assessment he has just now and scheme to engage that stock and wealth further and further uh, for that reason he does not hesitate to act in any sinful way so deals in the black market and illegal gratification he believes in his own strength and does not know that whatever he is gaining is due to the past good deeds he has no concept of past causes he simply thinks that he Uh, that all his mass of wealth is due to his own endeavor a demoniac person believes in the st- in the strength of his personal work not in the law of karma this is very important uh, the law of karma facilitate everything that is happening to be uh, my endeavor is re- necessary it's required but not uh, it's required but not the only thing that is required that can guarantee me outcome the desired outcome it also requires sanction by krishna sanction of krishna happens if according to the law of karma not uh, as per his whims and fancies or he doesn't interfere because if we are not a devotee he doesn't care for us he Hello. care for us not in the same way that he would care uh, for a devotee he would be neutral to us udasina vadasina according to the law of karma prabhupad writes according to the law of karma man take his birth in high family or become rich or very well educated or very beautiful because of good work done in past a demoniac think that all these things are accidental and due to the strength of one's personal ability now this is dangerous conclusion because there will be times when despite of all your strengths you will not achieve what you want to achieve plus um, if everything is accidental then um, if world is a random world everything happening in the world is random then um, uh, then the 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 in the in the entire systematic world which is so systematically designed um, karma law of karma whatever is good bad ugly happening to us is because of the is our all random event is 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 most incorrect way, logic in illogical to think in that way the whole world is logically explained but why i have taken birth on the street with no home no money to my parents my parents are also missing right from birth i am thrown in the garbage place to die and somehow i survived now i'm thinking why am i die like this is it matter of accident if this is accident uh, then the the world is unreal world is then the god is unfair and but god is all fair god is not unfair god is giving us what we deserve not what we want and what we deserve depends on what we have done in past like everyone works in the company for 8 hours but ceo gets highest salary and the watchman gets the lowest salary now it's if, if we, we there's no argument that it because ceo does her deserves a more salary uh, he has taken the more responsibility he is more qualified to receive that more salary he is doing more responsibilities and more uh, <clears throat> he has taken more accountability and for which he is getting more salary than the pun who is also supposedly spending 8 hours in the company so uh, so this is not accident and thinking it is all mere accident uh, of this world and what's happening to us is foolish <clears throat> and hence one should be careful watchful with while we operate in this world because we are all surrounded by demoniac people with demoniac mentality and they will be the bollywood is full with demoniac mentality it's all nonsense and if we take inspiration from bollywood if we uh develop our philosophies seeing movies uh, then we are going to have demoniac mentality ourselves 
so we have to be very careful from where we draw our inspiration from whom we get inspired from which jokes we laugh at uh, it's all play a role in this we should be very careful with with all these things so they the people with demonic mentality do not sense any arrangement behind all the varieties of people beauty and education anyone who comes into competition with such demonic man is becomes his enemy <clears throat> 17th verse uh, self complacent uh, propat uh, krishna continues describing this uh, what is happening with this or uh, demonic people in next four verse we will just see the translation and we'll quickly move on uh, the self complacent and always impudent uh, deluded by wealth and false prestige uh, demonic people sometimes proudly perform sacrifices for name only without following any rules and regulations so nama sacrifice is is nama yajna uh it's called yajna so nama yajna the chanting uh, yajna of chanting holy name but they do it for name sake uh, because they want their name to be published or or written in bold letter golden letters and they focus more is on that rather than uh, developing attachment for the god or for whom this charity is given 18th verse krishna says that bewildered by false ego strength pride lust and anger the demons become envious of the supreme personality of godhead who is situated in their own bodies and in the bodies of others and blaspheme against the real religion those who are envious and mischievous who are lowest amongst men i perpetually cast into the ocean of material existence into various demonic species of life so this is what we seen that those who are um, acting against the instructions given by krishna they become eligible to get his punishment what is his punishment they will go to hell they will remain perpetually bound in this material world they will their chances it's not that krishna wants to keep them but their activities does not justify him to show her them their his mercy so that these people can start their journey back to krishna so by our activities our desires uh, need we through this we need to demonstrate to krishna that we are interested in him and we want to come back to him and so that krishna can take more steps towards us and uh, making giving us more facilities for uh, by which you know we can come back to him 16.20 attaining repeated birth amongst species the demonic life species of demonic life o son of kunti such persons can never approach me gradually they sink down to the most ab abominable type of existence there are three gates leading to this hell lust anger and greed every sane man should give this up for they lead to the degradation of the soul lust uh, highway to hell or gate to hell lust anger and greed lust anger are generally quoted together because lust is uh, is uh, irresistible attachment or irresistible urge to enjoy um, and when that is not satisfied it gives anger and uh, if it gets satisfied it gives greed it we want more uh either way you know that lust will help you degrade only i will never make you happy uh 22 a man the man who has escaped these three gates of hell o son of kunti perform acts conducive to self realization and does gradually attain the supreme destination <clears throat> 23rd verse krishna says that he who discarded a spiritual injunction and acts according to his own whims attains neither perfection nor happiness nor the supreme destination now our as per our question that what why these people do not what happens to these people they attain neither perfection nor happiness nor the supreme destination uh, so this is their state that's what uh, happens to the people with demonic nature so propad writes in the purport the shastra vidhi or the direction of the shastra is given to the eternal to the different caste and orders of human society everyone is expected to follow these rules and regulation if one does not follow them and acts whimsically according to his lust greed and desire then he never will be perfect in his life in other words a man may theoretically know all these things 
but if he does not apply them in his own life then he is now he is to be known as the lowest of mankind in the human form of life a living entity is expected to be sane and to follow the regulation given for elevating his life to the highest platform but if he does not follow them then he degrades himself but even if he follows the rules and regulations and moral principles and ultimately does not come to the stage of understanding the supreme lord then all his knowledge becomes spoiled and even if he accepts the existence of god if he does not engage himself in the service of the lord his attempts are spoiled so the knowledge of god is required a more than knowledge of god rendering accepting him surrendering to him and rendering service to him in bhakti yoga devotional service to him hearing and chanting engaging oneself in hearing and chanting process start cultivating remembrance of krishna if that is not done then everything is else is spoiled why because just by knowing uh, that krishna is god if we don't do japa if we don't hear krishna katha if we don't visit his dham if we don't take prasad uh, that is food offered to krishna if we don't bring krishna in our life if we don't let krishna occupy larger greater portion of our life than other non krishna uh, other things uh, unless we, we we create a very strong remembrance of krishna strong uh, activities which are centered on krishna centered around krishna we will have not have strong remembrance of krishna unless we have lots of activities centered around krishna we will not have strong remembrance of krishna and if we not remember krishna at the moment of our death everything whatever we have done is that can get spoiled so therefore uh, one should gradually raise himself to the platform of krishna consciousness and devotional service it is then that then and that there can be there can he attain the highest perfectional stage not otherwise last verse tasmat tasmat shastra pramanam te कार्य अकार्य व्यवस्थित ज्ञावा शास्त्र विधानोक्त कर्म कर्त अहर्षसी वन शुड देर फोर अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज ड्यूटी एंड वॉट इज नॉट ड्यूटी बाय द रेग्युलेशन ऑफ द स्क्रिप्चर्स नोइंग सच रूल्स एंड रेग्युलेशन वन शुड एक्ट सो दैट ही मे ग्रेजुअली बी एलिवेटेड beautiful purport longish purport propada is written i will go through this <coughs> and then we will conclude today's session <coughs> as stated in the 15th chapter all the rules and regulations of the vedas are meant for knowing krishna vedeshya sarvair aham eva vidya by studying vedas i am to be known <coughs> but you can know me directly by reading bhagavad gita or studying bhagavatam so don't no need for you to go to uh, four vedas and study those complicated vedas <coughs> so krishna says uh, i am to be known uh, if one understands krishna from the bhagavad gita and becomes situated in krishna consciousness which means engages himself in devotional service he has reached the highest perfection of knowledge offered by all the vedic literature lord chaitanya mahaprabhu made this process very easy he asked people to simply chant hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare and engage in the devotional service to the lord and eat remnant of food stuff offered to the lord to the deity uh, one who is so chetan mahaprabhu what has he asked chant hari krishna mahamantra engage in devotional service devotional service means hearing krishna katha and uh, performing some practical service for krishna for the pleasure of krishna or devotees or helping devotees in some way or other to preach krishna consciousness <clears throat> to the other people to the uh, non uh, non devotees so by any any action done in this connection is devotional service uh, when that is done and you only restrict your eating to the food stuff that is first offered to krishna then you are you are on the right highway and which runs towards krishna <clears throat> so one who, one who is directly engaged in all these activities is to be understood as having studied all the vedic literature why because vedic literatures are supposed to guide you in this direction ultimate um, 
ultimately the ultimate conclusion of all vedic literature should be this only and if it is not then all our study of vedas is also wasted but if we know this then there is no need to study vedas no need to study the four vedic uh, scriptures just study bhagavad gita and bhagavatam and chaitanya charitamrut and you are delivered for this lifetime no more no more there is no need to do anything more for the ordinary persons who are not in krishna consciousness <coughs> who are not engaged in devotional service what is to be done and what is not to be done must be decided by the injunctions of the vedas so prabhat brings this one level below those who are devotees they need not even study vedas they can just act according to the instructions given by krishna in bhagavad gita uh, case studies demonstrated by various characters in shrimad bhagavatam and instructions by lord chaitanya who is krishna himself even if they can follow these three things their life is perfect they need not know any fourth thing no need but if somehow you don't have that faith if you are not in fully krishna consciousness then for you it becomes mandatory for you to follow at least the vedic injunctions the four vedas keep us in the boundary of where you are at least believing in the concept of god you are not atheist you don't think that the world happens according automatically this world is getting operated automatically you know that these devatas are also uh, administrative heads of the supreme lord there is some knowledge which uh, which is uh, which is why we will perform some sacrifices for the pleasure of these devatas so that they can provide you with your fa- all the facility for your sense enjoyment so this is this is not best but this is better than the worst so this is not best this is better than the worst this this is somewhere in the middle and uh, when if we are in this level we should hope and we should effort endeavor to go to that highest level of devotional service but if we are not at that level we should at least stay at this level and not fall down to the to the place where if we think there is no god a uh, world is automatic uh, there is no controller no maintainer no creator of this world and universe and uh, everything is accidental you know you are rich because it's accident uh, and or you have done your hard work hard therefore you got it uh, all your riches and if others uh, those poor people who are begging on the street you know they if they happen to work hard you know they will also get a lot of money and so on and so forth so it's a self manufactured theories if one is not indulging in, into this um, they can they can avoid doing that by remaining in the boundaries of vedas so shastra is without the four principle now why this is big, why because uh, prabhat talks about the four defects that are not there that are there in human beings but which are not there in god so shastra is also recommended by god uh, for those who cannot become pure devotees they should at least remain within the boundaries of vedas or the shastras so that at least they have possibility to elevate themselves to the pure devotional stage they don't fall no nobody is supposed to fall down to the level where uh, you think there is no god and there is no shastra everything is false and everything is and then you try to do things according to your own whimsically uh, you know own whims and fancies this becomes a dead dangerous stage so krishna is, wants to protect us from falling into this stage by giving us boundaries of shastra by boundaries of veda that if you are not by for some reason if you are not pure devotee at least stay within the boundaries of vedas and that way you are protected it's like going to uh, going to if it's best, best to be in sattva guna but if you for, for for example we took example of chanting japam in the morning hours uh, that is a sattvic activity uh, if you are getting up early in the morning preparing yourself for getting uh, chanting hari krishna mahamantra in the morning this is sattvic and that is great but while doing this uh, if you fall asleep in between after fourth round fifth round if you fall asleep that is tamasic sleep is tamasic so what you do you walk around walking is acting activity activity is rajoguna so what you are doing is uh, when you get a sense that you may fall asleep while you are doing japa you choose to walk instead of falling asleep walking is better though the chanting may not be as perfect as it was when you were sitting and chanting but at least this is better than falling asleep so you are protecting from tamoguna by 
purposefully going into rajaguna <clears throat> so that way also we can if you are not somehow becoming a devotee a pure devotee of krishna uh, we should at least try to remain within the four boundaries of vedas and protect ourselves and eventually try to elevate ourselves to the sattva uh, sattva guna or shuddha sattva shastra and this is the facility created by krishna for for the common people and because it is created by krishna it is free from defect the four defect which is uh, uh, committing mistakes <clears throat> the 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 imperfect senses the propensity for cheating uh, then <clears throat> committee committing mistakes um, certainly certainty of committing mistakes and certainty of being illusion uh, so these four defects exist in the human beings but these four de defects are missing in krishna so whenever krishna give whatever krishna does it is perfect so dharmam tu sakshat bhagavat pradita so whatever krishna speaks whatever krishna does whatever krishna instruct that is perfect and that should be done without any doubt so these uh, four defects principal defects are conditioned life disqualify one from putting forth uh, the rules and regulations so anybody who self create their rules and regulations for their life they will be subjected to these four defects and hence their creation will never be perfect so whatever they will do all their efforts will be shrama evahi kevalam in human society aversions to the principles of understanding supreme personality of godhead is the cause of all fall down so again we'll read aversion to the principles of understanding the supreme personality of godhead is the cause of all fall down krishna says uh, in the 4.9 That जन्म कर्म चमे दिव्यम एवं यो वेत्ति तत्वतः त्यक्त्वा देहम पुनर्जन्म नैति सब मामे थी अर्जुना that uh, uh, जन्म कर्म चमे दिव्यम एवं यो वेत्ति तत्वतः one should try to know it in tatva what the what is the what is the tatva behind his Krishna's appearance and Krishna's pastimes activities and once we understand that uh, then our appreciation for krishna will increase many fold and then we will be inspired to surrender to him we will be uh, inspired to live life according to his instruction knowing his supremacy knowing his greatness and knowing his sweetness knowing his loving relationship with us he is acting lovingly so for us and, and after, by knowing all this we will be in will be um, inspired to surrender to him and act according to his instructions and that way uh, you know we will become krishna conscious uh, therefore maya the material energy of the supreme personality of godhead is always giving us troubles in the shape of threefold miseries this material energy is constituted of the three modes of material nature one has to raise himself at at least to the modes of goodness before the path of understanding the supreme lord can be opened <clears throat> so one should at least come to the sattva guna if one is perpetually in tama guna and raja guna then for him the path to krishna becomes very very difficult it is never impossible but it becomes very 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 difficult so one should at least come to sattva guna for whom it is easy just like if you are taking nepal from nepal come to coming to new delhi is easy then easy and quicker than uh, somebody coming from london to new delhi and somebody coming from washington dc to new delhi so it is not best but it is closest to the best so at least we should be situated in sattva guna before we actually move to shuddha sattva Uh, it becomes easier for us to move to shuddha sattva from sattva guna it is possible by devotee's mercy and krishna's mercy for anybody in any guna to become krishna conscious perfect krishna conscious person however it is natural and easy for a person in sattva guna so one has to raise himself at least to the mode of goodness before the path of understanding the supreme lord can be opened without raising oneself to the standard of the mode of goodness one remains in ignorance and passion then which are the cause of the demoniac life for such person there is no hope those in modes of passion and ignorance what happens to them they deride scriptures and deride the holy man deride a proper understanding of the supreme personality of godhead they disobey the instructions of the spiritual master and they do not care for the regulations of the scriptures in spite of hearing the glories of devotional service they are not attached 
they are not attached. It's important. Uh, so Maya Sakta Manapatha Krishna says, you get my you get your mind attached to me. And that has to happen somehow or the other. Even, even <clears throat> um Yena Kena Prakarena Mana Krishna Niveshate. Rupa, Rupa Goswami says this in the uh, nectar of nectar of uh, devotion book. So uh, so yena kena prakarena mana krishna niveshate and if that happens then uh, performing devotional service becomes easier and uh, so so they disobey we don't and acting according to the instructions also becomes very easy so but demonic people they disobey the instructions of the spiritual master they do not care for the regulations of the scriptures in spite of hearing the glories of the devotional service they are not attached they are not attracted, thus they manufacture their own way of elevation. These are some of the defects of the human society which lead to the demoniac status of the life, of life. If however, if however, a bona fide spiritual master who can lead one to the path of elevation uh, to the higher stage, then one's life becomes successful. <clears throat> so the so we heard that um, the, all the debate that goes on in the world around about the recently, for example, the the movie Pathan, the dresses that is worn, should uh, people have expression, uh, freedom of expression, uh, all that, or earlier the sex crimes which took place, uh, that uh, living relationship people were uh, the one girl was cut into 35 pieces, and when that news broke, some some people from some other community they uh, they came up with a news that uh, some other person, some other person in the in the different community, uh, in, in the so so this was a, a Muslim boy cut his girlfriend into 35 pieces. Now the when this news broke. Other people, other people from Muslim community came back with the news of a Bangalore techie cutting his wife into 70 pieces. Now, this debate is this entirely foolish. We discussed one case study in the previous section that uh, an actress wanted to strip nude if Indian cricket team were to win World Cup. And then the PETA organization said, oh, if you want to strip nude, why don't you strip it for the promoting animal care, animal protection? The whole discussion is on personal whims and fancies. So it's not based on scriptures. So the scriptures tell us the position of woman, which is very sacred. It's not meant for this. Uh, Matt, not meant to be. The woman should be under protection of father until the stage of marriage. Post marriage, she should be under care of his her husband. And once husband leaves his body, she should be under care and protection of her son but she should always be under some protection. Why? Because women are, are matajis. Women have this divine quality to act motherly, to uh, hold the motherhood, to become mother. And uh, she should not just be reduced to a sex object, which is glamorized by today's society. And that's why the whole discussion is happening on the wrong Basis, the basis itself, foundation itself is wrong. So no matter which side you take in this discussion, uh, you are discussing something of nonsense. You are discussing it wrong way because a woman is not supposed to be treated like this. She is not just meant to be a sex object. And with this in mentality, if we look at her and if we treat her, then this is what we will come up with. This is what the Today's uh, the whole discussion in the society uh, on on the lunch tables in the in the nukkar corners um, and in the in the in the, in the amongst friends among WhatsApp among social media the whole discussion is leading in in the wrong way so the blind leading blind all are going to hell so for a devotee they have no business they don't have to deal with any of these things because knowing fully that this is not based on scriptures the discussion uh, is not based on scriptures so they will not want to be a party in this discussion uh, it's complete utter nonsense <clears throat> so uh, we should pick our fights carefully we should pick our discussions carefully when we operate in the world 
and uh, not to get over attach over uh, engrossed in things which are not connected with krishna in any way we should we will end up doing some of those things for uh, earning money for maintaining our family and we should do it only to the extent necessary if we uh, if we over indulge in those things they will surely give us pain they will surely give us problems they will surely bring us more chinta more worries and more stress uh, that will result out of it so they will take away our peace of mind if we have over exposure to those things they will take away our bhakti whatever we are performing right now they will take away our attraction for krishna that we have developed over uh, by by scriptural understanding and by our own personal realizations by our personal experience uh, they can they can drag away uh, drag us away from krishna if we if we choose them to feed with wrong things hence when we operate in the world we need to be extremely careful we should be always remembering uh, what is our objective of in, in this human life our objective is to go back to krishna in this human life itself to be happy to be eternally happy in his association while serving him and <clears throat> for that we need to have a desire to go there and to get desire we need to have we need to understand what is our relationship with him who he is what is his role in my life today as it is happening and uh, once i know this and once i uh, once i this i can know only if i know who i am i am part and parcel of krishna mama i am so jeeva loke jeeva bhuta sanatana so my i am eternal part and parcel of krishna and uh, my role the my, i am connected with krishna i am part and parcel of krishna not anybody else i am not parcel part and parcel of durga i am not part and parcel of shiva i am not part and parcel of ganesh i am not part and parcel of brahma and what to speak of indra and other demigods so i am part and parcel of krishna so i can only get connected with krishna only connection with krishna can give me fulfilling happiness a fulfilling relationship a fulfilling uh, life and then krishna can become the objective of my life rather than i going to krishna for getting some objective of my life i want new car i want new wife i want new home and so and so forth so make our relationship with krishna stronger by knowing about krishna by knowing whom we are and cultivate develop a desire to go to him and do the perform the necessary practice with faith in association of devotees so that we can go back back to his abode and live there eternally happily to summarize people with a demonic mentality act whimsically and they justify it <clears throat> now this discussion we should not be part of wherever it is happening with whoever it is happening could be our bosses it could be our parents it could be our close friends it could be our relatives could be our office colleagues it could be our college friends our childhood friends so on so forth but having known what real knowledge is and where it exist uh, we should not be participating any discussions uh, which are uh, which are not on happening on this basis which are baseless which are nonsensical which are pers are uh, coming out of everybody thinking out of their own mind out of their own um after after the, their own cooked philosophies or worst is philosophies which are imported from bollywood <clears throat> who seems to be preaching people more than uh, the religious organizations <clears throat> but so uh, we should carefully guard ourselves from all this nonsense <clears throat> because uh, there's no point if if possible we can give them right information by bringing in krishna into the discussion now they will say that you bring krishna into every discussion but that's reality without krishna sh this, there should be no discussion that should be happening and uh, i think i my feeling and all that if whatever speak after that it's all nonsense because it has to be based on krishna we can speak our personal experience but uh, <clears throat> uh it has to be in connection with krishna everything is connection with krishna then it is talkable then it, it is listenable then one we can give our ear to it otherwise we should only deal with to the extent it is extremely necessary otherwise we should not deal with it no need uh, and more we deal with those nonsensical things our 
the faith in Krishna will become weaker and weaker. We make that stronger, then this becomes weaker because we have just one lifetime. We can't goof up. Uh, we have no time to experiment. Our time can be up any more, any day, any moment. So we should be very careful to guard our devotion while operating in this world. The operating in this world is unavoidable, but guarding is optional, and we should guard our devotion, who should guard our faith, we should guard our beliefs, we should guard our values that we have acquired, we should guard our life, we should guard our practices, our devotional service has we have some practices, so we should guard them carefully, and not let anyone attack those, and destroy those, so that we can uh, continue to perform devotional service, and, and for the pleasure of Krishna, <clears throat> so this is, uh, so this is because we are not perfect due to uh, our four defects. Now, why the demoniac people are demoniac? Because they act. Uh, because they have perfect. They 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 are they they are built in. There are some built in imperfections in them. There are four defects, and uh, with these four defects, whatever philosophy you manufacture is will be subjected to those four defects also. No nobody can perfect create a perfect philosophy from imperfect uh, inputs. Scriptures are instructions by God, Krishna, uh, who is perfect. So whatever he instruct, that is perfect without any fault or defects. And by following these instructions, we can act effectively in the world and continue uh, to successfully pursue spiritual progress to achieve the ultimate purpose of taking human birth, that is going back, back to Krishna. Uh, so this, uh, so this is, um, so again, following Krishna's instructions. What do you mean? Uh, Krishna in Bhagavad Gita is a is a is a is a Upanishad, but it's a it's a nectar. It's a conclusion, a nectar of all the Vedas, and that that's why it's called Gita Upanishad. And uh, so that called summary of all information that is given in all the Vedas is in Bhagavad Gita. But within Bhagavad Gita also, there are sections which are, um, which are only descriptive and informative in nature. There are verses and sections which are only meant for information, like Karma Yoga. It doesn't really want anybody to act on the level of Karma Yoga. Why? Uh, or Dhyana, Buddhi Yoga, Dhyana Yoga. These are information given by Krishna because these were prevalent at the time when Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita. And in future also, even today's times also, they, they exist in some somebody, somebody is practicing Hatha Yoga, somebody is practicing Samadhi, somebody is uh, trying to do Asanas, Yoga Asanas. Now, all those are steps, different steps in the Dhyana Yoga, the Ashtanga Yoga sections uh, has uh, many steps. Uh, one of somebody is doing Pranayama, someone is practicing Pratyahara, uh, that is uh, preventing, performing great austerities so that not feeding your senses with sense gratifications, objects of sense gratification at all. Uh, so, the, so, so in bits and pieces, people are doing things, even if it is all it is all there in Bhagavad Gita. It is not recommended. In the last verse of sixth chapter, Krishna says, "Yogi nama pi sarvesham madgate nantaratmana shraddha van bhajate yomam samayyukta tamamada." That uh, amongst all the yogis doing different kind of activities. Now he is not even considering. Uh, those who are non-devotees. Uh, now that population is actually larger. That could be world's 90% population or 95% population is non-devotee population. So they have nothing to do with the Krishna or God per se. And uh, or it could be demonic population, could be a very, very high percentage. So um, whatever that percentage is, but uh, Krishna is not even considering those. But even amongst the smaller fraction of uh, devotees who are trying to pursue Krishna through various means of uh, karma yoga, dhyana yoga, jnana yoga, uh, buddhi yoga, Krishna says amongst all these, bhakti yogi is best. Um, among all these, bhakti yogi is best and he is best situated to invest his mind into me, to act according to my instructions, to cultivate my remembrance uh, during his lifetime and also coming back to me at the end of his life. So uh, this is what we will hope to do in our life and the facility for hearing and chanting, the morning japa session, evening reading sessions uh, taken by Nartam Prabhu and morning sessions are led by uh, different devotees. <clears throat> so request you to all to take benefit of the same. Time for our question and answer session. 
uh, we can go to the chat box now. <clears throat> if you have anybody has any questions, please raise hand or type in the chat box. So there is one question about Vrindavan Yatra. So there will be one Yatra towards the end of uh, end of February, and uh, we will soon publish dates for the same. And all of you are requested to uh, look forward to those dates and book as soon as those dates are published. It will be a small Yatra. Uh, we typically leave on Wednesday and reach Vrindavan on uh, Thursday morning, noon, but noon time. Then oh, this this is how the yatra starts uh, noon half day of uh, Thursday full day of uh, Friday and Saturday and half day of uh, Sunday and Sunday evening we return back to Mumbai we start from Mumbai five o'clock we catch train at Pathura station and we arrive at eight a.m. Uh, back to Mumbai and we've been this is a annual yatra every year we've been going last Karthik also we went to Vrindavan it was a blissful ten days. A beautiful yatra in the association of devotees, senior devotees. Prupa Disappearance Day we celebrated over there, and which was attended by 90, 90 of his direct disciples who spoke about Prabhupada uh, Leela, Prabhupada the memories. Uh, plus, we went around with Baba, uh, that's Din Bandhu Prabhuji, who is uh, also a direct disciple of Srila Prabhupada, who has been living in Vrindavan since 1984. So, he only leaves Vrindavan for some medical treatment or visa related work, but otherwise, he doesn't go out. So, he's been taking devotees all around Vrindavan, showing them different places and talking about different pastimes. So, a very beautiful, a beautiful experience of um, seeing Dham through years. Uh, that is possible because of his mercy. So he's agreed to um, to agree to give us more time in, in our coming yatras as well, upcoming yatra as well. According to his schedule, we will fix finalized dates and publish those. But uh, request everyone to uh, register for that yatra and come. Uh, it's as as I said, it's going to be a three four days yatra. So maybe a couple of working days, a holiday. Uh, is sufficient for us to attend the entire yatra. It's not going to be 10 days. So that way it's again going to be convenient. Uh, so that's about yatra. So we don't have any other questions. So uh, we'll end today's session. Uh, thank you everyone for joining in and staying back. It's 1.14, um, apologies for the delay. And um, we will please try to be Krishna conscious. There will be book distribution in the evening. Um, where if wherever you are near near to your locality, try and do book distribution to your family members, to your friends, to amongst your relatives, uh, office colleagues. Find uh, relevant people. Find interested people. Give them Bhagavad Gita. This is Bhagavad. This is the month in which Bhagavad Gita was spoken. So we are encouraging everyone to uh, do book distribution at our personal level, at individual level. We, if you have some birthdays coming up, anniversary celebrations coming up buy some Bhagavad Gita copies and then uh, keep them in with you so that whenever that um, occasion will come you can uh, you know can distribute Bhagavad Gita to your loved ones and start help them start their journey back to Krishna as well so uh, uh, this is uh, you know for the Bhagavad Gita distribution and uh, thank you everyone for joining in and wish you all a very happy safe week ahead uh, please stay Krishna conscious throughout the week and we will meet on the, on the next Sunday with another topic. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Krishna everyone. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Dandavad Pranam. Thank you Prabhuji. Prabhuji Dandavad Pranam. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna Mataji. Hare Krishna 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 H